OpenHAB is an open source home automation platform that offers extensive flexibility and customization. But is it the right choice for your smart home? In this video, I take a deep dive into the platform, exploring everything from installation to daily use. When you first visit OpenHAB's website, you're greeted with a clean, minimal interface. Right away, it's clear that this platform is designed for tech-savvy users who want complete control over their smart home setup. The site provides a lot of documentation, which is great, but if you're new to home automation, it can feel overwhelming. There's a learning curve here, and unlike some other platforms with more user-friendly dashboards, OpenHAB requires time and effort to configure properly. The installation process depends on what device you're using. OpenHAB can run on various systems, including Windows, macOS, Linux, and even a Raspberry Pi. I decided to test it on a Raspberry Pi because that's one of the most popular ways to set up a dedicated smart home hub. The installation itself isn't too difficult if you follow the official guides, but once you get it running, the real challenge begins, setting up devices and automation roles. Unlike platforms like Home Assistant or Hubitat, OpenHAB doesn't come with a polished UI for adding devices easily. Instead, you often have to manually configure things using text-based configuration files or rely on add-ons to extend functionality. This makes it powerful, but it's not beginner-friendly. If you're someone who enjoys tinkering with code and deeply customizing your setup, you'll love the flexibility. However, if you're looking for a plug-and-play experience, OpenHAB might be frustrating. The platform supports a massive number of devices and protocols, including Z-Wave, ZigBee, and KTT, and KNX, which is a huge plus. It allows you to integrate smart devices from different brands into a single system, something that closed ecosystems like Apple HomeKit or Google Home struggle with. But again, this requires manual setup, and if you run into issues, troubleshooting can be complex. Not sure how to avoid draining your wallet on gifts. I used to face that problem too, until I discovered Gifmeo, where you can get cash back on your purchases and keep surprising your loved ones without breaking the bank. Click the link in the description. One of OpenHEB's strongest points is its automation engine. You can create incredibly complex rules, combining multiple conditions and triggers to customize your smart home exactly how you want it. This is where OpenHEB shines for advanced users. You're not limited to simple on-off automations, like you are with many commercial platforms. You can create scenarios, like dimming the lights when a movie starts, adjusting the thermostat based on outdoor temperature, or even using AI-based presence detection. However, the user interface, even with the newer UI options like Main UI, still feels outdated compared to competitors. It's functional, but it lacks the polished, modern feel that platforms like Home Assistant have been improving upon. The mobile app is decent, but it can sometimes feel slow, and setting up remote access requires extra configuration. Another consideration is community support. OpenHAB has an active user base, and there's plenty of documentation and forums to help you troubleshoot issues. However, because it's not as mainstream as some other smart home platforms, finding solutions to specific problems might take more effort. So, is OpenHAB worth it? If you're a power user who enjoys open source software, and doesn't mind a steep learning curve, it's a fantastic choice. The flexibility and device compatibility are unmatched. But if you're looking for an easier setup process with more intuitive controls, you might be better off with alternatives like Home Assistant or Hewitt. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more smart home content. Let me know in the comments if you've used OpenHAB and what your experience has been like.